our entry members can check and see confirm it namaste everybody welcome to entry the world brain day 2021 stop multiple sclerosis that is the theme for this year's world brain day today with us we have dr bhagya bogaram she is medical director of neurology in texas usa we will have another lecture with mrs alka ranjan she is expert in naturopathy and nutritionist she will advise us about the nutrition related to autoimmune disorders and lastly but not the least i will be guiding you with some amount of yoga related to multiple sclerosis so welcome welcome everybody the theme stop multiple sclerosis is there for this 2021 world brain day what does it mean why why we are discussing this because this disease is on the rise slowly it is rising the way we are mixed in the world nowadays because of so much of communication so much of transportation the genes are also getting transmitted at the same time we are finding that many environmental factors are also increasing because of pollution and nutrition related challenges so what happens in multiple sclerosis there is disability because of that we see that there is a huge impact on a person's life and not only the person the family's life also approximately 2.8 million people of all the ages globally are affected by multiple sclerosis and some receive life altering diagnosis every 5 minutes okay education we must work on the healthcare professionals to recognize the signs and symptoms of multiple sclerosis that is why today we are conducting this webinar and we should help people to gain the access to the treatment not only that we should help people to diagnose the condition earlier because earlier the diagnosis better the treatment okay now coming to yenri what exactly is yenri i am dr mayur and i am a neurosurgeon in addition to that i teach yoga in the journey of my life i understood few things which i have tried to put together in yenri yoga is essential part of our life even if we don't do the yoga which is shown in the videos which is shown on the television or which is written in the books we are doing some or other kind of yoga we are the part of environment and unfortunately we are the only animals who are dirtying this planet unfortunately at the same time we are doing this because of one very important feature that feature is our intelligence and this intelligence is part of our neuroscience the nervous system which is extremely developed in our existence because of that we started extracting and exploiting the mother nature we have to through this neuroscience itself we have to do research we have to understand and we have to reverse the situation which we have created for our future generations which is potentially uh, you know self harming already we know we have seen in last one and a half years what has happened with corona pandemic that is the purpose of yenri it was the work has been going on before the corona pandemic but now we are seeing and we are doing the things more proactively because this is the time this corona pandemic is the time is it is the time when we understand that we have to reverse whatever destruction we have caused so that is why we consider this whole earth as our family vasudeva kutumbakam and we are on the pursuit of bringing back the mother nature's balance okay so thank you very much for joining in we have with us our first speaker dr bhagya bogaram she lives in us 
she is married she has two children and she is certified by the american board of psychiatry and neurology she is a diplomat she did her mbbs from india from jjm medical college davangere and she is trained in us for neurology she is right now working as medical director at medical city arlington since january 2020 so we all should welcome dr bhagya bogaram she is going to enlighten us with the knowledge of neurology in terms of multiple sclerosis so welcome dr bhagya bogaram ji namaste i will allow you to share the slides i am stopping my share you can you can start now you can unmute yourself um yeah. one second yes. i'm i, I can will... hear your voice yes um so um let yes. me go to slides uh show that way it will automatically i have the control so um first of all uh, i would like uh, to thank dr kaku uh for giving me this opportunity it's a wonderful feeling to talk to home crowd i did grow up in a small town uh, near bangalore uh, kolar uh, uh my only uh, grievance for this um uh lecture would be my dad is not here he would have been so pumped to hear me but um uh, i'm sure he's listening from wherever he is um having said that um again um it's uh it's i have been given 15 minutes by the host uh but i will try to do my best uh, to give a overview of multiple sclerosis um i have tried to make this presentation as uh, uh easy to understand as possible for the uh non medical community so um some historical facts um ms or what we call in short form multiple sclerosis was first described uh, way before in 1300s but uh, the famous uh jean martin charcot actually described the lesions which we see in ms and then again a uh, few years later um louis ranvier uh, described that what exactly happens in ms the myelin sheath which i'll come to it in a little bit uh being the prime target in multiple sclerosis you can see almost a century later is when first mri image uh, of ms was published and then in the early 90s first ever drug which was the disease modifying drug was approved in united states and um, and then in the same decade bruce trap described that there was irreversible nerve fiber damage which was also responsible for disability so as of today we have about couple of dozen uh, treatments which are approved by the fda in united states i'm pretty sure uh, the same are available uh, in india as well as uh, our host um, alluded to earlier worldwide approximately about 3 million cases have been documented and continue to diagnose every single day um so as we call multiple sclerosis as short term as ms literally means there is scarring due to inflammation uh, at multiple sites of the nervous system it is it involves brain spinal cord optic nerves uh, the nerves which supply the eyes and the nerve fibers they are attacked by the autoimmune process that means our own cells uh, they are triggered by some unknown mechanism and they cause destruction of the nervous system um sometimes it can be uh, self limiting that means 
uh, people can have one episode and never have any more symptoms. Those are the lucky ones. But for the most part, it's progressive disease. Uh, the unfortunate thing is it affects younger people, mostly people between uh, second and fourth decade. Even though we see plenty of pediatric patients, although I do not take care of pediatric patients, uh, anybody below the age of 18 or considered pediatric group, uh, we do see a fair number of cases. And we have also diagnosed patients who are age of about the 40. And uh, um, the course of the disease is pretty similar to what we see in younger patients. Uh, this disease affects women much more than men, but um, the disease progression is uh, similar in both men and women. Women are affected about two to three times more than men. So this is a, a geographic uh, distribution of uh, patients. Red is the highest risk, as you can see, North America and some Northern European countries and some Southern Australia and New Zealand is where you see uh, the highest risk of patients and India being in the low risk zone. Uh, I think we do see patients uh, in India, but I think the number of cases are much more in the countries that I have shown in this map. Um, so people always think uh, their life is over when you are given a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. But these are the myths that one should uh, say, no, uh, this is not a death sentence. First of all, this is not a contagious. So you cannot sit next to a person who has MS and contract it. Absolutely not. And it's not directly inherited. That means a pregnant mom cannot give it to her child, even though the risk of that child developing MS is slightly more than anybody's mom who does not have MS, but mama cannot give to her baby. And it's not always severe. Like I said, some people have very mild course and they can have normal life. And unfortunately, in some cases, uh, MS can be progressive and fatal. There is a variant of multiple sclerosis called Marburg disease. And uh, uh, it is so far advanced in such a short time it is uh, very sad uh, in uh, medicine, uh, like some conditions that we cannot help these patients. So um, just because uh, you have a diagnosis of MS doesn't mean you have to stop working or stop enjoying life. Uh, you can have near normal life and because it affects young women, it's not a reason not to have children. So these are some of the common myths that pay people in the general population have, and I would like to throw it out there. So what exactly causes MS uh, or who is at risk? Uh, people who are genetically predisposed, if they are in the perfect environment, um, which triggers an immune mediated attack on the myelin sheath and the nerve fibers, there is destruction and various symptoms occur uh, to form the constellation of multiple sclerosis. So this is a, a very uh, crude way of saying there are activated T cells, which are a, a subset of uh, lymphocytes in the body. They get activated for unknown mechanism and they cross the blood brain barrier and they attack the myelin, which is the covering. Um, the simple way to put it is if nerves are electrical copper wires and the plastic coating is the myelin sheath. Although the myelin sheath is not one continuous tube, there are certain uh, breakages in the myelin sheath where the 
nerve signals jump from one area to another area to go very fast. Those are called nodes of Ranvier. Uh, but um, we see that uh, these activated T lymphocytes cross the blood brain barrier and exclusively damage the myelin fibers. And um, they, this interferes with uh, nerve signals. And these are the types of damage that are seen. This pictorial graph shows that um, the one in the purple and with the uh, hairy like um, uh, projections, that's the nerve cell or the neuron. And um, uh, the yellow one is the myelin. So as you can see the blue dots, I, I'm not sure if you can see this, uh, that is the uh, destruction uh, from the um, t activated T lymphocytes. Sometimes the damage can be in, uh, at spotty, sometimes it can be continuous, sometimes there is no connection between the neurons and uh, that is what causes advanced or more severe forms of multiple sclerosis. Um, so when do you suspect? So the right age group person comes into your office and they have this constellation of symptoms. They can have weakness, sensory complaints like numbness, tingling, or burning sensation. It can be various parts of our uh, body, or they could just have visual complaints where the optic nerves are involved. Fatigue is by far the commonest symptom in patients who suffer from MS, and also it's very difficult to treat. And they can have any number of complaints, including seizures, memory problems, spasticity, muscle um, uh, spasms, uh, gait problems, balance problems, speech problems, and bladder and bowel problems. And younger patients can also have sexual dysfunction. So uh, they can have any permutation and combination of these symptoms uh, at presentation. And uh, when do you suspect uh, or do you always need uh, help of investigations or testing? So MS is a clinical diagnosis. Uh, somebody who is in the right age group comes with all this constellation of symptoms, you suspect right away. So history taking is very important. Some laboratory data will help to rule out mimickers uh, and some of the other conditions can have similar symptoms. And if somebody has uh, dissemination in time and space, that means they have number of episodes um, interspersed with the time and space, and then your suspicion is strongest. So, and also laboratory data should uh, exclude other possible conditions such as Lyme disease, lupus, uh, sarcoidosis, and other things. So what kind of tests do we perform? So in uh, uh, 2021, I rely only on MRI. MRI techniques have advanced so far that um, the technique is so precise, precise that uh, when we see the lesions on the scans, one can diagnose MS. But uh, um, sometimes we do uh, spinal fluid analysis to look for the MS markers. There are certain uh, markers that we uh, see exclusively in patients with uh, these demyelinating uh, illnesses and that can confirm the diagnosis. VEP or visual evoke potentials used to be done way back in the 90s and 80s uh, when I was in medical school. Uh, and we used to rely on them for involvement of the eye. But um, now I see that it's uh, used very rarely. There are even some doctors who do not have the equipment to test that because MRI technique is so precise. These are some of the images. Um, these are MR images. These are uh, various uh, techniques that are used. So this is um, uh, the brain scan, uh, which is the right hemisphere, left hemisphere, and the black uh, spaces in the center of the brain scan, they are called ventricles. So the lesions or the plaques are typically seen in and around the ventricles. They are called 
periventricular lesions. So there are some criteria just by diagnosing MS by uh, uh, looking at the MRI, they are called uh, modified McDonald criteria, and that's what we use to diagnose these patients. Um, so one can ask, um, is everybody at risk of developing MS? No, not necessarily. So if you look at these stats, uh, general population, the risk is only about 0.1%. But if somebody has a close relative, uh, then their risk is about 3%, but the risk jumps to 25% if someone has a disease uh, with an identical twin. So um, blood relatives, uh, almost 20% of our patients say, oh, my great aunt had MS, my second cousin had MS. So about fifth, one in every five patients we diagnose in the clinic say they have a blood relative with MS. So there are some risks, uh, they are not exclusive to MS, uh, but smoking, obesity, low vitamin D level because of uh, reduced sun exposure uh, are some risk factors uh, that could uh, uh, pose a threat to develop MS. And uh, one virus, uh, Epstein-Barr virus exposure has been implicated, but there is no concrete data in the medical literature. Um, so again, um, having a diagnosis of MS is not a death sentence. Uh, this is the reason. Approximately a third of the patients have very mild coats. They may have one episode and not have another episode. So I try not to uh, scare the patients and depending upon their MRI lesions, their symptoms, uh, we hold their hands and then go along with them. Uh, but a third of the patients uh, with uh, increased plaque burden have moderate course. That means they have some disabilities, may have to use a wheelchair, may have to use a cane, and may have to see the doctors often. But a third of the patients obviously have protracted course and they have the ones who are disabled for life. Uh, they are either bedridden or in wheelchair. Uh, these are the tough uh, subset of patients who are difficult to treat. And um, despite of best treatments available, they continue to have relapses. And some of the uh, predictors of better outcomes include females, even though they suffer more, uh, younger females under the age of 35 tend to have better prognosis if they have exclusive sensory symptoms then they tend to have better uh, prognosis. And monofocal, that means one episode rather than multiple episodes also uh, indicates a better prognosis. If somebody has a relapse and they completely recover, come back to baseline, that also indicates good prognosis. Um, so there are several types of MS. Um, these are some of the common ones. Relapsing remitting MS or RRMS, what we call is by far the most common type of MS, uh, which constitutes about 85% of the patients. Clinically isolated syndrome is patients have one episode and you can see maybe one or two lesions on the brain scans. Primary progressive is Patients are hit hard at once and they never recover and they have protracted course. Secondary progressive is people have uh, uh, episodes, they recover, episodes, they recover, they have relapses and they recover. And then after one or two, three episodes, they continue to progress. They are called secondary progressive uh, type of MS. And the treatment is a little different, but for the most part, all the medications that we use, all the drugs that we use, disease-modifying treatments that are available can be used uh, in, uh, um, you can use them in primary progressive, secondary progressive, although some are unique to certain subsets. And this is a pictorial graph of what I was just talking about. So once uh, you have seen a patient, they are in the, uh, they have the right type of symptoms and you made a diagnosis of MS, then what? 
First is a long discussion between the treating physician, patient and their families. Families have to be involved in this first discussion about their uh, diagnosis and treatment and what to expect. And the treatment can be uh, pills, uh, it can be self-given injections uh, or like in, uh, injectable pens and or infusions. And a big part of MS treatment involves physical therapy and rehabilitation. So uh, as you can see, uh, treatment does not involve only just the physician or the neurologist. It's a team of doctors, team of personnel that uh, involves uh, in taking care of these patients, neurologists, primary care doctors, pharmacists, of course, and the nurse uh, to infuse all these drugs, physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech and language pathologists, psychiatrists, psychologists, all of them form a part of team. So in the universities, we have multidisciplinary um, a team where they are, everybody is under one roof. But when you are in a community practice, uh, you form a team of your own and take care of these patients. So what is the main goal in taking care of these patients? You take care of the relapses when they have an exacerbation, when they have a flare up, you, you treat that and you treat their symptoms like depression, anxiety, if they have incontinence, if they have speech problems, following problem, you take care of those symptoms. And then the biggest part is disease modification. So what can you do to these patients to start them on some sort of treatment? These are disease modifying treatments to prevent further progression. And of course, uh, one of the strategies is rehabilitation and psychological support. Um, how do you treat relapses? Not all of them need to be treated. Only if their symptoms last more than 24 hours, I would initiate any kind of treatment for relapses. It could be corticosteroids, immunoglobulins, which can be given in the office as an infusion, but if somebody's relapse is so severe that you want to put them in the hospital for plasma exchange because their immunoglobulin burden is so much that uh, their immune system and the nervous system being attacked and they have severe uh, weakness, numbness, and they are paralyzed. That's when you admit them to the hospital for plasma exchange. And after you take care of the relapse and then you put them through vigorous rehabilitation program. So um, I couldn't uh, find uh, names of the medications uh, which are available in India. These are the uh, commercial names of all the drugs uh, as of today that are available in United States. Within the last year, there are about six to eight newer drugs uh, have been uh, flown into the market and they continue to flood the market. Interferons are one of the first ones to be uh, introduced into the market in the early 90s. Uh, we hardly ever use them. Um, some patients who have busy schedule, uh, they resort to, they want to take pills. They don't want to see the doctors. They want to take a pill and then treat their disease like any other condition. And there are several of them which have had very good data like Aquadera, Abagio, Gilenia, they have about 10 year data to show that uh, the relapses can be cut down by 50%. Copaxone is a self-injection and uh, that is still used. It's been in use since the late 90s. We still use them and it's cheap, it is generic and everybody can afford it. Infusions are uh, one of the latest in the treatment of MS. Tysabri has been around for 15 years. Ocrevus, Lemtrada came in the last three, four years. They are very expensive. Kesimta is a new kid on the block, which was introduced uh, in 20, late 2019. And these are all uh, newer monoclonal antibodies. They are very specific, and then they have lesser side effects. But uh, uh, only downside to it is these are infusions, so the patients have to come to the 
clinic to get the infusions. But Ocrevus is twice a year, Lemtrada is once a year, Kesimta is twice a month, and Tysabri is once a month. So some patients opt for these infusions. Um, what else uh, do you do for these patients? You take care of their pain, you manage their bladder bowel functions. They have a lot of muscle spasms. So you give them antispasmodic drugs. Again, uh, you try to treat their fatigue. As I said, it's very difficult to treat. And then of course, counseling is a big part of taking care of these patients. And sometimes they go into contractures because of uh, weakness and you do take help of orthopedic colleagues to uh, relieve these contractures by surgical means. So um, in summary, uh, it's a common inflammatory disease of the central nervous system, affects females more frequently than men. The cause is a combination of genetic and environmental factors. And the symptoms are constellation. So a detailed history is very important. And MRI is a very sensitive uh, test for making a diagnosis, and it's not a death sentence. And uh, two thirds of the patients can have near normal life. A third of the patients, you cannot help them. But various treatments are available. Again, it is a team effort uh, consisting of many, many uh, specialties to take care of these patients. And I will stop here and I will stick around for any questions. And thank you for your patience and listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bhagya Ji, for such an elaborate and uh, fully you have covered multiple sclerosis. I, I am 110% sure that all of uh, our audience have liked the presentation and their knowledge about multiple sclerosis has definitely improved. Now we have a multiple sclerosis patient over here. She is asking, thank you first of all. And uh, she is asking that in a recent yearly MRI, there was a new lesion. Yes. I do not have any symptoms. I am currently on Tech Fidera. Okay. I have been asked to change to Rituximab. I am a little apprehensive as I am comfortable with the current medication. What do you suggest? Um, uh, if it is just one lesion, um, first of all, uh, I think we need to image uh, entire neuraxis. That means brain, and cervical, spine. and thoracic spine where you can see lesions. Okay. If it is more than one lesion on Tecfidera, I would suggest uh, switching to uh, any other uh, treatment. Tecfidera by far has, uh, uh, you know, uh, 10 year data showing about 6,000 patients. Uh, they have a very good data and it's well tolerated. If she has only one lesion, uh, what I would suggest is repeat MRI in three months to see if she continues to have more lesions. And uh, just because she doesn't have symptoms doesn't mean her disease is progressive. So um, if she is not sure about uh, switching the medication, I'll, I'll I would just pause uh, here just a second because she has put one more message, which uh -huh. says that to add to it, several pre-existing lesions had full resolution compared to previous MRI. There is um, just one new non-enhancing lesion with no symptoms. Um, I would say uh, if it is non-enhancing lesion, I would say uh, sit tight, like I tell my patients and repeat MRI in three months. Or if she develops any new symptoms, then I would have a discussion with her uh, physician about switching uh, to another uh, okay. disease modifying treatment. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Thank you very much, uh, Bhagya ji. Just a second, we have one more, most probably we have one more question. Just a second. Uh -huh. I, somebody had a history of left-sided stiffness, initiated uh, injection, lorazepam and freesium. I, I do not think that this has complete information. Um, okay. We can, we can uh, drop down this question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more question is there. Ruma Srivatsava, she is asking, 
I have first stage MS. Can it be treated? Absolutely. Uh, any stage of the disease, uh, we offer treatment. Um, like I uh, alluded uh, in my talk, um, if it is a clinically isolated syndrome, they have one lesion and they had very minimal symptoms. Uh, and if they are in the age group, they are young uh, females, uh, I would uh, do imaging every six months, imaging uh, meaning MRIs, uh, and then look for more lesions. And uh, how long to um, uh, keep imaging them? Uh, one is directed with symptoms, two, Sometimes I do six monthly intervals and if they are stable, then I go to every year and then every other year. It all depends upon their symptoms. And uh, no, if they don't have symptoms, they have one lesion, I would like to wait and uh, do not start on treatment. Okay. One more uh, means, uh, one more question related to vaccination and demyelination. Would you like to take this question? Um, uh, there have been some guidelines about uh, um, the vaccination. Uh, people who take oral agents uh, because they take the medication every day, uh, they can take the vaccination. Uh, we are talking about COVID vaccine. Yes, COVID shield. Okay. Here, here, I, here, here, I'm here. sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to assume. Um, yes. So um, COVID vaccination can be given to patients who are taking oral agents at any time. And patients who take infusions, uh, they have to time it in between their infusions. So uh, because these are uh, immunosuppressants and uh, you are giving a vaccine to mount an immune response, so you don't want to give two agents which contradict each other. So the vaccine may not be effective if you take it right after your infusion. So there is um, MS Society, Multiple Sclerosis Society of United States and everybody has access to it. So you can put it in your uh, browser and then say MS Society and then there is a list of recommendations that was put forth and uh, we can, uh, one can look through it. Okay. Okay. So well, this is last question I would like to take. Um, it is a long question. My wife uh -huh. was diagnosed in 2010 in US. We are now back in India. Health has gotten worse. We had tried all the fields of medicines like herbal, homeopathy, Ayurvedic. Nothing seemed to work because of imbalance, health decline. She had to quit her job. Since it's been 11 years uh, since it has been diagnosed, can we start English medicine right now? What, what else do you suggest we do? Because there is absolutely no improvement and she's completely bedridden. Please help. Um, I would... Um, uh, all the medications that are available uh, in U.S., are also available in India. So if there is no disease progression in the last 11 years and all the disability that the patient has is from older lesions, um, then no treatment uh, is helpful. But that being said, I would not say no, never because neurology, anything is possible. So I would yes. start off uh, 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 setting up an appointment with the neurologist and have imaging done, MRI of the brain, uh, neck and thoracic spine with and without contrast to look for if the disease is active. If the disease is active, then we can treat this patient. Now, the previous disabilities, can it improve? Uh, that is hard to say. That is hard to say. If somebody is uh, bedridden and uh, uh, can I make them walk? Uh, I uh, don't know the answer, but I sure would like to try. Uh, but uh, I would start off um, uh, getting an evaluation with the neurologist and then getting MRIs done and, uh, and then have a discussion about what needs to be done. 
thank you thank you very much dr bhagyashri ji for your time i know it is becoming late for you to start uh, your day thank you very much and uh, yes if you can stay with us till the end it will be great pleasure thank you very much oh. Yeah. Uh, i i will be happy to, i have blocked my clinic yeah, i can stay Thank till you. 10 o'clock in about an, another 30 to 45 minutes i can stay yes yes yes, yes. thank you uh uh-huh. we heard a non multiple sclerosis patient after taking covid shield developed demyelination due to vaccine can we have any information on this do you have um, any information on this that a non multiple sclerosis patient after taking covid shield developed demyelination due to the vaccine um these uh it's uh we have seen several uh, neurological problems uh, uh after covid vaccines uh, even in us after pfizer moderna and uh, uh, gnj vaccines that we have been using uh it de- we have seen demyelination in the central nervous system like ms like presentation these patients we do not know we have to determine it is is it a coincidence that the patient developed after the vaccine or is it ms itself of the first attack happening after covid but these patients are typically treated uh, in the hospital uh, with iv ig and then we follow them uh, whether they are at risk for developing future attacks to be seen uh, yes we have seen about 1 to 2% of the patients have had a uh, very different um types of uh, neurological uh, complaints uh, we have seen from seizures to strokes to um demyelination and uh, tics and uh, uh, twitching everything under the sun we have seen with the vaccine but the percentage is very very small if it is yes. purely related to vaccine and then there is hope it can be treated and they do recover thank you thank you very much dr bhageshri ji now i think it's time to move on but last but not the least question for you uh, dr mr prasad rao he is asking that can multiple sclerosis also cause because of a lifestyle issue and if yes how can we prevent this is it through nutrition and uh, well being tools such as yoga meditation etc what is your experience on that um uh i would actually uh defer this question until the end because i want the audience to listen to you and the other <laughs> okay. uh i Fine. think that would automatically answer the question yes yes, yes. thank you thank you very much now i think we'll uh-huh. move on to alka ji alka ji will be eagerly waiting to present our nutritional aspects on multiple sclerosis so let us move on to alka ji Alka Ranjan ji is the founder of Jesha Health with uh, which provides an integrative approach to chronic health conditions she has been working in the field of natural healing for last several years and uh, she is integrative medicine health coach with a diploma in naturopathy she has certifications in uh, personal nutrition and natural remedies as well so i will stop sharing here and alka ji please come please uh, switch on your video and uh, yes grace this webinar alka ji are you able to hear me alka ji alka ji i have i have made you co-host you can unmute yourself yeah doctor it was not happening sorry ah uh, and now even my video is uh, the just same message just okay. a second yeah now you see now are you able to do that just see yeah yes yes, yes. please share your slides and you can yeah um one second we will have to be slightly quick i will also be quick in my approach and um, 
So you are sharing. Is it available now, Doctor? Yes. Yes. Namaste, everyone. Uh, my name is Alka Ranjan, and uh, uh, I'll be speaking about the role of nutrition in uh, autoimmune disorders. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Mayur and Yenri for uh, giving me this opportunity to share uh, this information with uh, all of you. And uh, uh, first of all, I would like to speak about the probable causes of uh, for autoimmune disorders. So, from what uh, uh, from what I have learned over the past several years, like the toxic uh, overload from pesticides infections, chemicals from hygiene products, they all create a lot of load on our body and our immune system goes into overdrive. And uh, similarly, uh, deficiencies of vitamins and minerals, fatty acids, all these have a influence on our immune system. Simil and like uh, the gut flora, which is very important, uh, the trillions of microorganisms that are living in our body and uh, uh, which we don't realize the, their importance, uh, they have a huge role to play in our immune system and uh, hormonal imbalances. Like for example, if our blood sugar is not balanced, we can, we are, we can have a lot of uh, systemic inflammation and that can cause a lot of uh, uh, problems, uh, including this autoimmune disorders. Then there is a, a lot of, uh, a lot of, Dr. Mayur has shared a lot of information regarding circadian rhythm and uh, you can watch the videos which he has been sharing. And I would like to emphasize the term darkness deficiency here, which is basically we are living in uh, so much of artificial light and uh, it causes a lot of stress on our body. Our uh, cells, our mitochondria have to work over time and it causes a lot of mitochondrial strain. And, uh, 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 and uh, similarly, we have a problem of electromagnetic frequencies and radiations, our gadgets. They are all causing a lot of strain. Then there is a problem of emotional issues, which could be due to some traumatic event or adverse childhood event, which keeps our nervous system in a uh, fight and flight mode, which makes our uh, 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 immune system again go into overdrive, thinking that it is under some kind of threat. And uh, the, all these issues, uh, whether it is toxins or it is hormonal balance or it is emotional balance, they can cause leaky gut syndrome, which is basically the lining of our intestines of our, can, get leak, uh, can get leaky, can allow undigested food particles, or it can allow some kind of uh, toxins or uh, even uh, infections to go into our bloodstream and cause systematic, systemic inflammation and uh, our immune system attacks them and it becomes an autoimmune disorder. The, uh, I wanted to specially men mention Dr. Terry Balls here, who is the source of inspiration for my talk. As a, as a conventionally trained medical doctor, she was diagnosed with MS and uh, was able to reduce and even reverse her symptoms uh, from being uh, uh, bound to wheelchair. She was uh, uh, biking again by using food-related interventions. And some key supplements. So I have book. I have her book right here with me, and I would really encourage everybody to grab a copy. So what uh, uh, in functional medicine or in integrative medicine, uh, it is it is being seen, and even some Ayurvedic doctors here in US are using paleo and autoimmune paleo diet as a um, starting point to reduce the inflammation and uh, to calm down the, uh, the autoimmune uh, flare-ups. So what does the paleo autoimmune paleo diet uh, refer? It is basically uh, a hunter-gatherer diet. So that would mean that we have to reduce grains and any other agricultural products. And uh, mostly uh, grains, nuts, sugar, dairy have been proven to be more inflammatory. I have given a list here uh, 
which can um, help the viewers to uh, see what what to incorporate and what to avoid like we can we all know like green leafy vegetables are good for us cabbage family leek family mushrooms um, brightly colored produce so vegetable oils like canola they are pro inflammatory and uh, we should avoid um, any produce which is non organic uh, including animal products if we are using regional and seasonal i mean this is some very common knowledge but uh, the importance uh, is when we start making this shifts then only we realize how much difference it makes we may not uh, we may think okay yeah we all know this but when we start incorporating these changes the inflammation starts coming down the autoimmune flare ups start coming down and it really makes a lot of difference so uh, in addition to this we can follow an elimination diet to see which foods are causing uh, problems for us we might be sensitive to uh, some products like for example in my case i was uh, having almond milk every day and uh, when i uh, uh, and i was still not getting that much benefit from reducing grains and everything and when i eliminated them and then i realized that almonds were causing a lot of problems for me so we can eliminate uh, a particular uh, uh, food group like grains for 3 we 3 weeks and reintroduce and see how our symptoms are uh, and another very important uh, 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 thing is to soak and germinate grains beans nuts and legumes because of the problem of anti nutrients such as phytates lectins and trypsin inhibitors so grains uh, or any other any seed it has a anti nutrient because uh, uh, by nature it was supposed to pass down our digestive system and propagate a new plant so the, the nature has given it an it a anti nutrient so that it can Uh, it can avoid uh, digestion so they are a bit difficult to be digested so if if we soak them properly or, and if we can germinate or sprout them and then consume them so people who are specially vulnerable who are having autoimmune disorders can really benefit from this uh, uh, soaking and germinating of grains nuts and legumes and pre and pressure cooking them again helps Uh, there are some key nutrients sorry key, key supplements uh, especially vitamin d magnesium b vitamins uh, coenzyme omega 3 digestive enzymes and fiber because our uh, diet is critically low in these nutrients our soil is not as uh, it is depleted and uh, we are not getting the same amount of nutrients micronutrients as we were getting even 20 30 years back so supplementing with the some key supplements has a immense influence on our health and and few key points which i would like to mention is uh, as uh, it is important to uh, pay attention to what you eat it is also very important how you eat so eating in a relaxed manner organic produce and not avoiding snacks avoiding eating late at night you know maintaining that ayurvedic lifestyle which was uh, given to us by our ancestors and um, maintaining a proper circadian rhythm and i would again like to mention to go to again this channel and uh, view doc, uh, the videos posted by dr mayu and uh, emotional uh, issues how to have more emotional resilience and engaging in spiritual practices i just wanted to just uh, brush on these topics because this is as important as our diet so uh, why is um, this important to have a proper diet or a anti inflammatory lifestyle is because the science of epigenetics is telling us that um, the genes express themselves according to the environment they are if we are creating a healthy environment in our body the genes will express themselves according so just focus on creating a healthy environment instead of focusing on the disease and 
do not identify so much as with your disease as with having a healthy body and creating all those health promoting changes and uh, as dr mayur mentioned that uh, we do provide a three month health coaching program and i would i'm uh, so happy to say that even dr mayur is part of the gisa family and if anybody i had forgotten to... that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been some time doctor sorry about yeah. that yeah. yeah so and if anybody wants to reach out to us they can reach out and uh, we would be really happy to talk to you and uh, have a free consultation as well so i just kind of gave a very brief and simplistic overview uh, without taking uh, anybody's uh, too much of anybody's time i hope that helps thank you so much thank doctor. you thank you thank you very much it was a short but it was highly informative highly nutritious talk as we can say <laughs> okay in terms you, of uh, yes points and yes one interesting point i would like to highlight here is that diet is different for each and every person so don't just copy paste from uh, social media you don't uh, navigate your diet through social media consult a proper person who can help you out okay another point very important which uh, alka ji mentioned is epigenetics please go do search about it maybe sooner i will put one video in detail about epigenetics uh, i will guide you about what what exactly it is uh, happening in terms of epigenetics okay and here one question is there would you like to take this question in present situation electromagnetic radiations are more how to protect ourselves even our kids one simple thing is i would suggest just switch off your wifi router at night keep okay. your devices on airplane mode uh, as much as possible mm -hmm. keep them away uh, not in your bedroom uh, these are some very simple basic things which anybody can do great thank you another question by as multiple sclerosis patient can i have canola oil or mustard oil for cooking mustard oil is fine but not canola not canola oil okay yeah. okay thank you thank you very much uh, alka ji for your time alka ji has been with us for a quite a long time now and we have been doing brahma murut yoga about which i am going to tell you so next speaker is me myself <laughs> so i will take the webinar on now so this is what we are doing early in the morning every day 4:30 to 5:30 okay so let us see what we are doing so what we are doing here is that we are practicing together early in the morning at 4:30 am we are doing yoga asanas we are doing surya namaskar we are doing pranayam we are doing meditation we are doing mudra therapy also early in the morning 4:30 am this time itself is actually medicine this was started on 1st of august 2020 before that i was streaming at 6 o'clock as my hospital work started becoming slightly more so i shifted at 4:30 am and from that day onwards we have been conducting these sessions every day morning we have conducted multiple number of sessions a multiple number of challenges and through that many people have got amazing benefits you can go through the comment section you can go through various uh, testimonials you will come to know idea is not to promote this the idea if you saw we have written something that we are on the mission to reap maharshi effect now what is maharshi effect what is maharshi effect when we do collective meditation together when we come together when our minds synchronize together as the as somebody was asking that what about radiation so instead of receiving radiation we will emit radiation we all have our own radiation and this radiation is about goodwill is about love kindness happiness maitri karuna mudita so all these things when it comes together we will create a society which is more spiritually inclined which is physically mentally socially and spiritually healthy so that is the purpose and for that we need a great number of people 
who are similar minded and that is how we have taken a sankalpa of 1 crore people coming together this is going to be the greatest experiment in the history of science and spirituality together if we pull this off and for that i need all of your support now coming to yoga for multiple sclerosis i am not going to take much of your time already we have now we are at exactly at 8 o'clock this is me here you can see here this is me now i am standing in one pose what is this pose called as in the chat those who yes those who don't know yoga they should try to tell what is this pose this pose is called as tadasan okay and then when we do tadasan from tip of the toe to the top of the head we have to become aware of ourselves when we are able to pull this off this is one of the most difficult asanas according to me when we are able to pull this off we will see what happens you will when when you practice it daily you will come to know you will come to know that what happens exactly okay and for multiple sclerosis patient from here this starts the awareness what happens is we are we see lots of things around us okay we have approximately 70000 thoughts in a day but how many thoughts do we remember that is what is called as ignorance avidya okay when we develop some diagnosis like multiple sclerosis at that time what needs to be done is we have to become aware because unfortunately many of our neurons are dying they are dying and because of that we are losing our information we are losing our integrity of the nervous system at that time when we become aware the nervous system comes in attention and there is a way through which it may stop progressing okay let us come to next slide now why we need to do yoga so many problems are there in multiple sclerosis those who are patients they will be knowing that there is a issue with mobility there is issue with flexibility there is issue with wide range of activities which are not possible we want to do that we want functionality we want deeper understanding of life that all these things can be achieved through yoga correct problems are there there is nobody on this planet who does not have problem everybody is facing one or the okay okay fine so you are are you able to see now correctly yes so you can see here we what we need is there in yoga okay once the diagnosis is made what we need is there in yoga if we make it an integral part in addition to our medicines lots of things are possible okay next why does this happen okay why does this happen in a very simple word can anybody tell i am means i will just i would like you to think i would like you to think it's very very important for all of you to think okay see here this is the normal neuron and this is abnormal neuron as dr bhagya lakshmi ji had told that these neurons the myelin coat the coat which is like a wire no this wire will be there no this wire beneath this wire what do we have we have metal okay and the viral uh, this virus coating this uh, wire coating is uh, made up of plastic now when with this plastic is removed what happens that metal may get damaged okay or it may get kinked that is what happens with the nerve and why does this happen that question i have answered in today morning session okay why does autoimmune disease occur you can go to this video on my channel called as mayurvi kaku and see in short if i want to tell there is something called as molecular mimicry which happens molecular mimicry and now this why does it happen one is genetic factors another one is environmental factors now this molecular mimicry when it will happen the cells of our body which are used for our defense will start destroying our own cells why because they are confused mimicry mimicry all of us know no that somebody will make amitabh bachan's voice somebody will make modi ji's voice somebody may make my voice so this the voice acting is mimicry and we may get confused and we may look behind and say oh amitabh bachan came or what so that is what is mimicry that is where our own defense cells that is our t cells b cells 
they start producing things which are against our own myelin sheath our own nervous system that is how the autoimmune disease called as multiple sclerosis happens some amount of detail i have given in today's video you can go and see now coming to the understanding of root cause of the problem whenever a tree needs to go down go down don't do anything you just cut down the roots automatically the tree will fall down we all know that correct and what are the root causes of the problems which we all face like high blood pressure anxiety depression thyroid hormone cancer and your autoimmune disease diabetes and all these things what are the problems inflammation inflammation continuous inflammation keeps on happening because of diet also we all know that because of so many things which are in the diet which are inflammatory stress physical mental social spiritual stress all these kinds of stresses are there which happen poor diet diet we, we know we all like coca cola we all like soda we all like uh, burger we all like fermented food some some fermented food are good some fermented foods are not good toxins we take toxins in the form of preservatives okay so whoever is taking packaged and bottled food again and again they are taking toxins okay this we should understand another thing is we are polluting oceans and the fish and all these things they are also getting contaminated with many toxins lack of sleep about this i have given a landmark lecture which is around 1 hour 16 minutes you can go and see on my channel the uh, video's name is can lack of sleep cause cancer okay because i operated on three four patients who were youngsters and they told that sir why did we get cancer we are vegetarian we are not drinking we are not smoking we are good people why why did this happen to me i told what are you doing they told we are working as software engineers and our timings are in synchrony with uk or us that is how they were disrupting their biological clock that is very very important you can go and see that poor relationships nutritional deficiency lack of exercise toxic thoughts trauma genetics poor digestion all these things are the root causes for all the diseases which happen okay so instead of wasting much time i will go towards what is happening in multiple sclerosis people face vision impairment people face cranial nerve palsies people face trigeminal neuralgia people face various sensory disturbances like pain like burning sensations and it is very uh, means disheartening to listen to the stories of multiple sclerosis patients motor disturbances they are not able to walk properly they are not able to balance themselves properly. then uh, bladder bowel dysfunction sexual dysfunction they are not able to pass urine proper, properly so many things are there motor dysfunction not able to walk properly not able to use their hands properly gait disturbance their walking is not good and then fatigue as dr bhageshi had mentioned most common problem is fatigue cognitive impairment their understanding levels also go down because of multiple plaques which happen okay now how and why all these things happen in a simple way if i want to explain all of you is that here suppose your air conditioner is not working or your microwave oven is not working or your fan is not working or your washing machine is not working or for that matter your iron is not working what you will do you will check the wire whether it is connected or not correct if suppose it is connected then you will come we will see that whether wire is some in between wire is broken or something like that means basically it is all about wiring a, a function of any appliance or any part of the body is also similar to that it is associated with the nervous system and if nervous system is blocked then the appliance our hands our legs our speech our understanding all these things they get disrupted okay so that is how it happens the wiring the nervous system is the problem coating of the wiring is the problem now here there is a ray of hope as well as there is some uh, you know some controversy i am just going to tell you there was a randomized control trial uh, in which they had done in patient versus out patient so in house you go and learn the rehabilitation okay and they saw that there is no change in the impairment but when the more intensively treated in patients were there their disability had decreased overall okay and uh, uh, the gain was persistent for 15 weeks improvement in perceived quality of life also was there for 9 weeks so in patient care helps a lot 
So I recommend here I get one idea for everybody who is having multiple sclerosis. They should find a peaceful place where they can stay alone in a you know better environment, epigenetically better environment, and there they can try to rehabilitate themselves under continuous supervision. Okay, like some hill station or something like that. Now coming to the point where I introduce you to the understanding of our existence. Okay, all these things which we were talking about is only about body. We were only talking about body, 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 body. Continuously we are talking about body, and body is just a small aspect of our existence. Now, when there is something which is there in the body, that is why we call this body as alive. If that is not there, then we call this body as dead. That is called as prana. Okay, and prana, how we will calculate through modern medicine, through ECG, through EEG, through ENMG, we calculate our prana. Okay, now prana is there. I have, I'm, I'm a neurosurgeon, so I see patients who have a body. I see their ECG, their heart rate, their respiratory rate, everything I see, but still those patients are not able to communicate. Those patients are not having something called as consciousness or ability to understand the things. These patients are not having something called as Manomaya Kosha. We are having emotions, but they are not having emotions. They don't have capacity to understand the emotions also. That is called as third layer of existence. Now, we see that children have body, children have prana, children have emotions understanding also, not completely, but some, somewhat. But they don't have knowledge. As they learn, they become knowledgeable. Now, your knowledge and my knowledge, we are all in different, different domains. And these domains are the part of our Vignanamaya Kosha, that is the fourth layer of our existence. We all, with, with this set of Koshas, we all try to reach to the higher level of Kosha, that is called as Anandamaya Kosha. Unfortunately, we get stuck at, some people get stuck at body level, some people get stuck at prana level, some people get stuck at Manomaya level. Some people get stuck at Vignana. I know this much. I know that much. I am this much expert. I am that much expert like that. So many things are there which happen. And we ultimately do not dwell into Anandamaya Kosha. Now, problem here also. If my body is deceased, then how I will go into Anandamaya Kosha? So that is the point. This is, this is where you start understanding the life, the purpose of life at a deeper level. I will tell you one of my patients who according to the books should survive only up to six to eight months, survived eight years. And the diagnosis was yesterday there was World Glioblastoma Awareness Day. So his diagnosis was glioblastoma. Now how he survived eight years? I asked him, sir, what is happening? <laughs> you, you are not having any recurrence. He told, sir, it is very, very simple. I forgot that I have a cancer. It is very easy to tell right now in front of the video, in front of the camera, but it is very, very difficult to execute. To gain our highest level of consciousness, we need to forget ourselves. We need to forget that we are just this body. Then we will start exploring the deeper levels of consciousness, deeper levels of our existence. Okay. So this is what it is, layer by layer, Pancha Kosha Viveka. I request all of you to go through this and start practicing Pancha Kosha Viveka. Start understanding what is your body level consciousness, what is your prana level consciousness, what are your emotions, what is your knowledge. Now, knowledge is not limited. It's not like that, okay, I am a neurosurgeon, so I am bound to only study neurosurgery texts. This is where people get stuck. We all should study whatever is possible for us to study and study better things rather than studying the things which come to a dead end. Okay. And then through that, we will get into Anandamaya Kosha, that is eternal happiness. Now, for me, what I, I would like to suggest you is for me, the understanding of Anandamaya Kosha is not a selfish way of getting Ananda or pleasure. We are talking about happiness, we are talking about eternal happiness, not about pleasures. Pleasures are different. They are selfish. Okay. Anandamaya Kosha to unlock is to serve others. As simple as that. 
to think about others to help others to serve others yes it may be challenging you may get hurt on the way but it is highly rewarding you will enjoy your journey of life okay that is what we are doing uh, since so many years okay now ashtanga yoga is the one which we all should practice for that we need to understand what is exactly ashtanga yoga which has been described by patanjali so yama niyama asana pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan samadhi how to do all these things so these things i have explained in my videos in detail you can go and see here in short i would like to say yama niyama are very very important we generally neglect that and we go into asan pranayam and all these things that is where we don't uh, learn things in detail that is where is the problem yama is ahinsa satya asteya brahmacharya aparigraha so ahinsa means non violence now it's not about like not killing anybody or not hurting anybody it's about not hurting ourselves also what does it mean so are we hurting ourselves physically no we hurt ourselves with the help of diet with the help of thoughts so all these hurtings we have to stop we have to stop hurting others at the same time we have to stop hurting ourselves that is called as ahinsa satya truth truthful to yourself truthful to others see many a times we are not truthful to others it happens but are we truthful to ourselves for becoming truthful to ourselves we automatically have to become truthful to others so that is how it can be corrected asteya means non stealing so we may steal so many times it's not about stealing physically it's about so many times we steal ideas we steal recognition we we, we do lots of things okay or we steal uh, the truth also means we don't tell the truth so these things are there which can be corrected brahmacharya is not about only physical continence it is also about mental continence if somebody is physically continent but um, in mind that person is keeping on thinking then that is not brahmacharya then aparigraha means non holding now holding is not only about uh, you know holding uh, money or fame or holding recognition it is not about that it is also about holding negative thoughts so we have to get rid of negative thoughts pretty fast then comes niyama shaucha santosha tapas swadhyaya ishvara pranidhan what does it mean shaucha means cleanliness cleanliness of thought is also very very important outside cleanliness inside cleanliness santosha means content being content now you will tell i have a diagnosis how can we be content that is where you have to be content that is where you have to understand that this human body has a limitation this human body has some expiry date we all know that but it does not mean that we have to go into the negative mode through that we have to go into tapas mode tapas means we have to find the purpose of life and we have to work on that that is called as tapas tapasharya is not only just closing our eyes and doing some meditation or mantra jap or yagna or something like that no it is also about taking some task and putting it to complete putting it through okay then swadhyaya self study self study is very few people do very few people do self study or if or, or if they do they do in a negative manner they underestimate themselves they try to find out loopholes within themselves and they just cave in and then finally is ishwara pranidhana ishwara pranidhana means not just going to temple and doing namaskar it is also about giving yourself completely to the higher consciousness so instead of you know there are many people who ask this medicine that medicine is this available is that available yes there is these things have to be done i am not telling these things should not be done but instead of completely banking on them one should what one should do is at the same time one should surrender to the mother nature one should surrender to the supreme consciousness that is what is niyamas these are yamas and niyamas and then asan pranayam these are all available on my youtube channel i would like to recommend you four important asanas for multiple sclerosis that is one is tadasan another one is dandasan another one is supta baddha konasan another one is viparit karani these four are very very important and they help the patients a lot okay and then pranayam simple nadi shuddhi pranayam one should practice in addition to that pranayam should be a regular thing it should not be just you sitting for 20 minutes and doing it it should be mindful breathing so whole day whole night 
you should be doing breathing mindfully that is what is pranayam that is what is mastering the breath so we have a 21 days master the breath challenge also which is already posted already done in april 2021 you can go through those uh, videos also okay most important aspect is i can and i will this confidence should be there doubt outside you will be speaking everything but inside doubt will be there inside doubt has to be cleaned up shaucha it has to be cleaned up with continuous swadhyay continuous swadhyay and be honest with your feelings if you feel something you tell it you purge it out you tell to your closest of your friends closest of your family you tell them that this is what is happening this is what is my feeling it will help you a lot it helps a lot okay now this slide has not come well action most important thing is not only thinking action when you do action at that time you will find results without action there are no results okay so this is our brahma murut yoga challenge this is the action which i have taken after understanding things and instead of just you know uh, procrastinating over government or procrastinating over, over uh, corporates or something like that why not if i want change then i should be the change which i want correct so that is how we started this brahma murut yoga challenge and it has been going on we have 600 plus videos on the youtube channel every day morning we are coming live and this sankalpa we have taken very seriously i have taken it very seriously i am i am doing it with me there are many people who are doing in the morning and i am fortunate that they are sticking around and if few people are sticking around right now then definitely the day will come when we all 1 crore people at least this is at least number which we are taken the day will come when we all will be doing meditation together the most fortunate part of internet is that the yes, radiation is there but at the same time it fortunate part is that we all can avoid pollution by gathering together can avoid pollution of transportation and can do it together but at the same time we are going to emit positive electromagnetic radiation by doing meditation and we all know that quantity is also important when something is done at an industrial level the benefits are multiplied number of times okay so these are some of the sessions you can see here this is uttana padasan this is bhujangasan see all the things cannot be possible this can be possible a bit in multiple sclerosis patient i recommend them to use wall support i recommend them to use yoga loops i recommend them to use yoga wheels i recommend them to use various props so that they can relax themselves okay so uh, yes that is possible simple raising of the hands this is urdhvahasta dandasan this is ardha navkasan this is trikonasan and this is uttana padottanasan okay then for pain i have a very beautiful session on yoga nidra which is called as chronic pain and pleasure so multiple sclerosis obviously is the source of chronic pain and we need some uh, you know uh, we we know that we all suffer through the pleasure which we try to seek so the uh, crux of that matter is discussed and we have done the yoga nidra session in 39 minutes in this one last but not the least who is this person michael hawkins michael alla stephen hawking stephen hawkins stephen hawkins yes, yes. stephen hawkins do you know what disease he had he had als yes amyotrophic sclerosis so this is multiple sclerosis which we are talking about and stephen hawking said amyotrophic lateral sclerosis okay so in that also person becomes crippled like this and he has to go on wheelchair on wheelchair he was told that he will survive only 6 to 8 months because in amyotrophic sclerosis what happens is the person develop respiratory failure they can't breathe they will die because of breathing failure okay that is what is general course at his, at his time and uh, he survived 50 years after the diagnosis of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis 50 years 50 50 years and in addition to that he had one and two wives 
okay even after being crippled he had two wives it's not about only wife it is about what achievements he did with his brain which was intact what achievements he did he explored and he gave new new aspects of astrophysics to all of us and because of him our understanding of black holes also improved okay so the the point here is that stephen hawkins did not have the backup of you know time tested ancient knowledge of yoga okay what i mean to say here is that we have ultimate source of eternal science with us and this science is not only about modernity it is about spirituality also spiritual science it is and with that if we try our best if we have that commitment if we have that gut to bring out that healing potential within us that i have no doubt that from today's lecture also there will be many multiple sclerosis survivors many many people with multiple sclerosis will show to the world that yes there is potential of self healing there is potential of improvement in addition to modern day medicine treatment i do not tell that okay you stop this and do this i tell combine best of the east and best of the west that is how we will be able to win the battle of multiple sclerosis finally i would like to quote the chapter 6 of shrimad bhagavad gita which says that uddharedatmanatmanam natmanam avasadaye atmaiva yatmano bandhu atmaiva ripuratmanah what does it mean that atma means not atma which you see in the movies okay atma means self atma means self self means one individual consciousness the individual consciousness has all the capacity to uddhar means uddhar uddhar means elevation okay and avasadayet means at the same time it has all the capacity to degrade itself so it is in the capacity of the self in the capacity of the individual who is going to make himself up or make himself go down and at the same time the self is the best friend means bandhu is the best friend of himself or herself and at the same time he is ripu ripu means enemy dushman okay at the same time he is his worst enemy i hope that i have made the point clear that multiple sclerosis there is molecular mimicry the our own cells become our own enemy somewhere our own thinking process is our own enemy if we correct for me for any autoimmune disease i have discussed with many patients autoimmune disease patients and i find a typical uh, you know negative frame of mindset many patients okay not all the patients many patients i find that they have a negative undertoning in their life negative thinking process or some negative events in life through which they would have developed the negative thinking process and they will go into autoimmune mode the moment they try to bring out the best within themselves the moment they forget themselves the moment they forgive themselves they come out of the autoimmune disorders i will be very happy to say that i have been able to help many patients with ankylosing spondylitis uh, rheumatoid arthritis and even uh, psoriasis and some multiple sclerosis patients they have been doing well and few patients have shown negative results in terms of the investigations after prolonged the usage of yoga in their life okay so thank you very much for your patient listening we have overshoot by 15 minutes thank you very much everybody for joining in if you have any questions we are open to yes thank you thank you very much uh, bhagya ji thank you our uh, i will just one second this is email id you can take this email id
here it is email id is here yogic neurosurgeon at gmail.com you can contact us for program you can contact us for support means you you can support us also uh, in various ways and uh, you can ask for us for sessions also thank you very much okay so we will close the session is it is it over thank you thank you very much for your kind words lakshmi kant ji thank you thank you very much we'll just chant the mantra om sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve badrani pashyantu ma kashchit dukha bhag bhavet om शांति 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 विथ योर आईज क्लोज स्लोली टेक योर बोथ द हैंड्स बैक होल्ड योर राइट रिस्ट विद द लेफ्ट पाम इनहेल आर्च योर बैक लुक अप एक्सेल बेंड फॉरवर्ड टच योर फोर टू द ग्राउंड एक्सप्रेस ग्रेटिट्यूड टू मदर अर्थ ऑफ माई टी योर पेरेंट्स एंड गुरु स्लोली इनहेल एंड कम अप स्लोली रिलीज योर हैंड्स विथ फ्यू ब्लिंग्स यू मे ओपन योर आईज ग्रेटिट्यूड to all of you for being the part of this collective consciousness thank you very much for joining in have a nice day i wish the best of physical mental social and spiritual health to all of all of us thank you namaste